Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wind Feathers Creations. Today, we're going to be making a dignity cover, not like the one we made last time, which was a bandana style dignity cover that had the magnetic clasp or the Velcro, and it was a double sided bandana that's uh, bandana style, well, adult bib, <clears throat> right? So today we're going to be making a different style because this is the most popular one that I make. Then there's this one that's just a plain one that's straight, basically like a rectangle style. This is the shorter version. Today we're going to make a little bit longer version. It is a double sided and it, it's not bandana style. So before we start, if you are have not subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you just hit that subscribe button. And again, it doesn't cost you nothing, just a click of your finger. Thank you. So as I was mentioning, this one is uh, gonna be a Velcro one because I do have high requests for Velcro style. And this one is gonna be very simple. I can make these with a bandana, but they're gonna be very short. So um, the requests that I have have been to make it a little bit longer because the shorter ones, uh, those are popular, but then again, there's some that want the longer version. So we're gonna start making these with just basic scrap of fabric. And I'm gonna bring my fabric here. So as you can see, I have big scraps of fabric when I make my bandana cover because it does take a lot of material. As you can see, the big chunks of material that it takes it leaves with big gapping sections. So here I found a little bit of section I had used. I had cut out some fabric for another project. So we're going to use this one here. So you always, I always like to start my fold on my fold. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to get this all ready for you. Now, because we are not using a pattern, I want to make sure you can see all the section. We are not using a pattern. We are going to use a method that my late auntie that recently passed away, my auntie Carmen, I'm doing this in honor of how she taught me how to sew. And one of the ways that I actually do about 90% of my, my sewing. So I'm gonna go to the section, I'm gonna pin I'm going to use this as a pattern, not the typical paper pattern that you go and purchase at the stores. So what I'd like to do is fold this bib in half, like this, where you get half of the bib. And then I'm going to place it on the fold as much as I can reach out here, right by the edge. You have to allow the seams at least uh, so that you'll know you'll have to sew on that section. So I'm gonna pin this down and then I'm gonna match it with this fabric that is also another piece of fabric that has just big gapping sections. Okay, let me pin this down, be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I laid down the, the actual bib has the pattern. I am going to now trace around with chalk. As you can see, I made that little chalk line there. That's gonna be my guide. So I'm gonna go all around and then cut it out. Okay, so here is the cutout. As you can see, I left that sewing seam where I'll be sewing. So with this, now we have our pattern. And now we have our actual front cover or back cover. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that other fabric because you might have big line pieces of fabric like this, which you don't wanna throw away, but you know you can reuse for something else. So here I found a pretty nice little chunk of fabric, but it is not on the fold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own fold. And what I, how I do that is first I put my cutout. Here is the fold section here. I'm going to make the fold. I can't make it on this side because it's too short. The fabric is missing there. So, oh, Oh, that's right because I would need it about the same length so actually we can make it here so to make it easier because the line is already straightened there what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew this seam here 
because it's not on the fold. So I'm going to sew it in the machine and then I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did is I stitched this fabric. I went to the machine and I stitched it. So now I have my fold. And now I can finish this big scrap of fabric that I have that you can't really make much, but there's certain things uh, a seamstress does that uh, just saves those big pieces of scraps of fabric. So again, here's our original. And here is the one that we cut out. Here is the fold of the fabric. So now we're going to put this down here. As you can see, I'm going to pin this down and I'll be right back. So I pinned down my fab, uh, pattern that I cut out with the original bib. And there I cut out my fabric. So now I have the front or back or the back and front section. And the way I cut out the neck one, you can get a plain piece of paper and kind of just play with the size you want and the pattern you want. Here I have a shirt. This is the extra large size that I used. Uh, and on this shirt here, t-shirt, as you can see, when somebody puts their bib over, it's going to basically land right by their chest area here in the front. So this kind of gives you an idea. You can just uh, take a screenshot like this and you can just cut out a pattern. You can do it like a V shape, any shape you want because you're the master of your adult bib. And of course, every month this month, uh, also my t-shirt here that says Every Child Matters that was given to me for all the children and families of our Native American families that have been put, placed in uh, nursing up. Uh, that were taken and they were put into uh, boarding schools. So um, they're still finding the numbers of the graves that have been unmarked. And it's really, it's really heartbreaking, but that is uh, the part of the history that comes out eventually with time. So now going back to the bib here. So what we're gonna do now is go, we're gonna put the good sides together and then we're just gonna sew. We're gonna stitch it together, the good sides facing each other. So I'm gonna pin all this down and be right back. So here I have pinned everything down. And what I like to do is I like to leave a little gap open on the side. It doesn't matter where you want it to be. So what happens is that this is where you're going to flip in the material, the fabric inside out. So I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch it up. Okay, be right back. So as you can see here, I have stitched it all up. I left the gap open just very little bit on this section here. So I didn't stitch it right here so I can flip the bib inside out. Then I got my zigzag shears and I just uh, cut just around the edges and the shoulders. So now I'm going to flip it inside out. I did want to share that when I flip it, I just put my thumb in the hole and I try to get my thumb way to the top of the opposite shoulder flap and then just flip it inside out and everything will come out inside out. So I'm going to flip it out, uh, straighten out all the corners and the edges and then I'm going to go press it and be right back. So here I have pressed it. And uh, so you can decide what side you want. This one is going to be a gift only because I did, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter because no one really notices. You're just the seamstress, the person that puts your project together. And uh, I'm just going to, I have a gift for this one because it's going to be her birthday. And uh, one of my little lady friends at the uh, adult care centers. <clears throat> so now we're going to decide this one. I'm going to make out of Velcro. She requested Velcro. So since pink is the color that we have here out of, on both sides, we're just going to go ahead and head and pick uh, the color pink. So now <clears throat> this is going to be, hold on. So we are going to use the color pink and cut out about one inch. You can cut more but one inch is about the just the perfect size. A lot of my other senior friends don't like the Velcro because they say it sticks to their hair, the female ladies, but the guys don't mind. 
So this one here, we're just going to place it here. And last time I shared about the sticky tape in my previous video. So if you want to look to see how I hold on, hold my Velcro down, you can go ahead and look at that video with the bandana style dignity covers. So I am going to stitch all around all the entire bib across. I'm going to stitch it and I'm going to stitch uh, zigzag my little Velcro. Okay, and again, if you want to see how I did the little Velcro, how I hold it down, look at my previous Dignity cover video and it will explain more and the product to purchase. So give me a minute to finish this up. Okay, so there you have it. I'm just finishing off the last bit of strands here. And we have finished our Dignity cover. It took really less than five minutes, but because of technicality issues, I had to stop and uh, fix the camera that was about to fall. So here you go. This one is a bit larger than my other one that I have. Here we go. So this one is a bit larger than the average size, the small size that I have had requested. It's a few inches. She just needed a little bit larger. This one is different from the bandana style, which is all the bandanas. <clears throat> and as you can see, I will list also the bandanas where um, I purchased those. I will list the Velcro that I purchased so you can make your own dignity cover for somebody that uh, either is a nursing mom, that they don't want to get people sneezing all over their baby. They can feed their baby, even if it's a bottle, they're bottle feeding their baby. Uh, loved one that's had a stroke. Uh, many reasons. This is mine actually here. I I'm getting ready. I love this holiday print. So again, you have learned how to make a new style of a dignity cover. And uh, it's a beautiful gift for someone. And especially as we get older, we need certain things. And this is something that is a very popular item. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day, a great morning or a great evening or night. And I'll see you again soon on my next different style of dignity cover. Thank you for joining me.